If you tuned into Queer Eye's first season and were hooked, you certainly weren't alone. It's impossible to not feel uplifted by the Fab Five, and in particular the show's resident grooming expert full of beautiful wisdom, Jonathan Van Ness. Every word is full of gusto and every sentence breathes empowerment, Van Ness has mastered the art of giving encouragement and advice thoughtfully. Van Ness, who began as a hairstylist working between Los Angeles and New York, has managed to turn his beauty expertise and talent for humor into a booming career. Before the success of Queer Eye, the 31-year-old rising star had already been spearheading a hilarious Game of Thrones recap series called Game of Thrones on Funny or Die and his podcast Getting Curious with Jonathan Van Ness. Queer Eye Season Two reinforces the power of gayness, review now, as one of the Fab Five on the newly rebooted Queer Eye, Van Ness helps each episode's subject look and feel like their best selves in and out of his salon chair. When he's not focused on one of his many projects, you can even catch him doing the occasional stand-up comedy show. Today, Van Ness and the Fab Five, Antoni Porofsky, Food and Wine, Bobby Burke, Interior Design, Caramo Brown, Culture, and Dan France, Fashion, return for the second season of the series. Ahead of the premiere, we spoke with Jonathan about his relationships with the guys, promoting positive dialogue and if he was surprised by Tom and Abby's wedding. How has your life changed since Queer Eye started? It's kind of like how Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera felt after their first albums. People know who I am now when I walk on the street. I was in a parade yesterday for Pride. It's like, what is this life? Who am I? I feel like I have daily, is this me? Moments. Did you expect the show to take off the way it did? No. I was really hoping people would like it and that we would be able to make more of it. I don't think I ever thought it would be a cultural phenomenon, I was just hoping people would like it. I was prepared for people to really not like it for some reason. I was doing that whole prepare for the worst and hope for the best thing so nothing takes you by surprise. But I'm still surprised because I don't think my hoping for the best was strong enough. Queer Eyes and Tony Porofsky is writing his own cookbook What's your favorite moment of the new season? There's a lot of really moving moments from this season, I think Tammy's episode, the first one, has so many moving moments. There are so many moments people can relate to in that episode. My personal favorite episode, and the funniest one, is in season 2. There's a lot of laughter, a lot of crying and soul in season 2, so I hope people will like it. I grew up watching the original version of Queer Eye, which was really popular, but also a bit more about aesthetics. Why do you think the reboot is really resonating with people? Wherever you fall politically on the spectrum, there aren't that many times that anyone is feeling that great. Everything feels really attack and angry and, I feel you. I feel like that too. It's nice to have a subject matter that covers some of those same things that people are really not feeling good about, so you can have a conversation where you don't feel like want to throw your TV or phone out the window. It's nice to have a safe place to have a conversation going, whether it's a friend or family member, you can use Queer Eye as an entry point to have a conversation that's meaningful. 
I don't think there are that many conversations where you can lean in and really talk about an uncomfortable subject matter. Bringing up news stories with friends or family members may not have ended well because it has a different charge, but something about Queer Eye is that it has a different charge that people can feel good about it and connect with. Tom really became the star subject of season 1. Were you just as surprised by Tom and Abby's wedding as the rest of us? I was. I think partly it's about Tom caring about himself and investing in himself that made it work. For me personally, as the single one, I'm just very aware of that culture of wanting to be in a relationship being the goal. For me, that was never the goal with Tom or anyone we work with. I want people to fall in love with themselves and to be really proud and full of joy for the space they take up. If someone else appreciates the space you take up, then that's icing on the cake. I'm way more intrigued by Tom's story where he can see beauty in himself. I think that's a way richer story. But I was really into their marriage, and I'm super happy for him. Credit, Amy Sussman. How close are you guys outside of the show? I hate all of them equally. Every moment with them is teeth pulling. I think at some point Netflix told me to do a certain number of social posts a day. I was like, Netflix can you please stop making me force this fake relationship? I hate them. I'm obviously kidding. I hope it's not one of those context Sarah Palin moments. No, I love them all. They're very real. I also feel like it's not lost on me how lucky I am for that. Maybe we are all in the honeymoon phase because I've only known them for a year and a half. These are not typical experiences for anyone, so to get to go through it with people I actually care for and have a positive relationship with is very lucky. I love hanging out with Karamo when we go out of town. He's someone I always know I can always spend a gorgeous Sunday with. Bobby is such a brother, he's so good to bounce ideas off of when it comes to finances or money. Dan and Antony, I FaceTime them like 17,000 times a day. They're like family. Family goes both ways, sometimes it's like I can't get close enough to you and other times you're like we've been on top of each other for 24 hours me have this moment. Karama was a therapist for 12 years. Bobby ran his own business. Actually all of us have. We're all really good about communicating with each other about things. You do Queer Eye, Game of Thrones, your podcast and stand-up. Do you have any other project plans? My podcast Getting Curious keeps me really busy, which I love. It's something I really like because I really get to be in the driver's seat as far as what I'm going to cover. It's really fun to creatively be in the driver's seat. Also, the stand-up keeps me busy. I'm really excited for season 2 to come out. I'm just excited to keep on doing what I'm doing. Somali Muslims take part in Eid al-Fitr prayer which marks the end of the holy month of Ramadan at the football pitch of the Jay Makadaha Stadium in Mogadishu. Artists perform during the opening ceremony of the 2018 World Cup in Russia ahead of the Group A match between Russia and Saudi Arabia at Lushniki Stadium in Moscow. 
Pope Francis arrives to lead the Wednesday general audience in St. Peter's Square at the Vatican U.S. President Donald Trump shakes hands with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un during their historic meeting at the Capella Hotel on Sentosa Island in Singapore. U.S. President Donald Trump looking at a cake being brought for him during a working lunch with Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long during his visit to the Astana, the official residence of the Prime Minister, in Singapore. Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump will meet on June 12 for an unprecedented summit, with the U.S. President calling it a one-time shot at peace. Muharrem Mings, presidential candidate of Turkey's main opposition Republican People's Party CHP, delivers a speech from the roof of a bus during a campaign meeting in Istanbul. French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Angela Merkel and Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe speaking to US President Donald Trump during the second day of the G7 meeting in Charlevoix, Canada. Looking on is U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton. Former South African President Jacob Zuma sings and dances on stage after delivering a speech during a rally in his support outside the High Court, in Durban. Russian President Vladimir Putin listens to a question during his annual call-in show in Moscow. Putin hosts call-in shows every year, which typically provide a platform for ordinary Russians to appeal to the president on issues ranging from foreign policy to housing and utilities. Protesters wave flags and shout slogans during a demonstration against the use of the term Macedonia in any solution to a dispute between Athens and Skopje over the former Yugoslav Republic's name, in the northern town of Pella, Greece. Police officers salute as the caskets of police women Soraya Belkasimi, 44, and Lucille Garcia, 54, arrive during their funeral in Liege. The two officers, and one bystander were killed in Liege on Tuesday by a gunman. Police later killed the attacker, and other officers were wounded in the shooting. A rescue worker carries a child covered with ash after a volcano erupted violently in El Rodeo, Guatemala. Volcán de Fuego, whose name means Volcano of Fire, spewed an 8 km five mile, stream of red-hot lava and belched a thick plume of black smoke and ash that trained onto the capital and other regions. Dozens were killed across three villages. A recycler drags a huge bag of paper sorted for recycling past a heap of non-recyclable material at Richmond Sanitary Landfill site in the industrial city of Bulawayo. Plastic waste remains a challenging waste management issue due to its non-biodegradable nature. If not managed properly plastic ends up as litter polluting waterways, wetlands and storm drains causing flash flooding around Zimbabwe's cities and towns. Urban and rural areas are fighting the continuous battle against a scourge of plastic litter. On June 5, 2018 the United Nations marked the World Environment Day which plastic pollution is the main theme this year. Palestinian mourners carry the body of 21-year-old medical volunteer Azan al Najjar during her funeral after she was shot dead by Israeli soldiers near the Gaza border fence on June 1, in another day of protests and violence. She was shot near Khan Yunus in the south of the territory, Health Ministry spokesman Ashraf al Qura said, bringing the toll of Gazans killed by Israeli fire since the end of March to 123. Spain's new Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez poses after a vote on a no-confidence motion at the Spanish Parliament in Madrid. 
Spain's parliament ousted Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy in a no-confidence vote sparked by fury over his party's corruption woes, with his socialist arch-rival Pedro Sanchez automatically taking over. Zinedine Zidane looks on after a press conference to announce his resignation as manager from Real Madrid. He confirmed he was leaving the Spanish Giants, just days after winning the Champions League for the third year in a row. A worker cleans up the millionaire migrants makeshift camp along the Canal de Saint-Denis near Port de la Villette, northern Paris, following its evacuation on May 30. More than a thousand migrants and refugees were evacuated early in the morning from the camp that had been set up for several weeks along the canal. Police and ambulances are seen at the site where a gunman shot dead three people, two of them policemen, before being killed by elite officers, in the eastern Belgian city of Liege. French President Emmanuel Macron meets with Mamoudou Gassama, 22, from Mali, at the presidential Elysee Palace in Paris. Gassama living illegally in France is being honored by Macron for scaling an apartment building over the weekend to save a four-year-old child dangling from a fifth-floor balcony. Migrants wait to disembark from the ship Aquarius in the Sicilian harbor of Catania, Italy Island awaits the official result of a referendum that could end the country's ban on abortion. Co-director of Together for Yes Alva Smith speaks to the media after exit polls suggested victory for the Yes campaign. Film producer Harvey Weinstein arrives at the first precinct in Manhattan where he turned himself into New York police for sexual misconduct charges. Russian President Vladimir Putin ah, meets with his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron at the Constantine Palace in Strolna, outside St. Petersburg, on May 24, 2018 people protest out at the Tamil Nadu house after. At least 10 people were killed when police fired on protesters seeking closure of plant on environmental grounds in town of Thuthakudi in southern state of Tamil Nadu, in New Delhi. People demonstrate in Paris during a nationwide day protest by French public sector employees and public servants against the overhauls proposed by French President Emmanuel Macron, calling them an attack by the centrist leader against civil services as well as their economic security. Newly appointed Catalan President Quim Torra arrives to visit jailed Catalan separatist politicians at the Estremero jail near Madrid. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro casts his vote during the presidential elections in Caracas. Maduro was seeking a second term in power. Channelized lava emerges on Kilau Aya Volcano's lower reef drift zone on Hawaii. The USGS said on its website that a fast moving Pahoe Hoi lava flow that emerged from Fisher 20 continues to flow southeast, with the quickest of three lobes progressing at 230 yards, 210 meters, per hour. Antifei High School student Dakota Schrader is comforted by her mother Susan Davidson following a shooting at the school in Texas. Schrader said her friend was shot in the incident. Multiple people have been killed. French President Emmanuel Macron, British Prime Minister Theresa May and German Chancellor Angela Merkel meeting during the EU Western Balkans summit in Sofia, Bulgaria. People hold flags with the state coat of arms of Russia as they drive along a bridge, which was constructed to connect the Russian mainland with the Crimean Peninsula across the Kerch Strait. 
Palestinians run away from tear gas shot at them by Israeli forces during a protest in Ramallah, in the occupied West Bank a Palestinian demonstrator runs during a protest against the US Embassy move to Jerusalem and ahead of the 70th anniversary of the Nark but the Israel Gaza border. A bullet hole on the window of a cafe in Paris, the day after a knifeman killed one man and wounded four other people before being shot dead by police Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel looks on after receiving the Lamp of Peace, the Nobel Catholic Award for her work of conciliation for the peaceful cohabitation of peoples at the Basilica Superior of St. Francis of Assisi in Italy. Police forensics investigate the death of seven people in a suspected murder-suicide in Australia. Four children are among seven people that were found dead at a rural property in Osmington, near Margaret River. Detectives are investigating the incident, which was said to be treated as a murder-suicide, media reported. Two firearms were found at the scene, Western Australia police said. Missiles rise into the sky as Israeli missiles hit air defense position and other military bases, in Damascus, Syria. The Israeli military on Thursday said it attacked dozens of Iranian targets in neighboring Syria in response to an Iranian rocket barrage on Israeli positions in the Golan Heights, in the most serious military confrontation between the two bitter enemies to date. Iranian MPs burning a U.S. flag in the parliament in Tehran. Iran said it will hold talks with signatories to a nuclear deal after U.S. President Donald Trump's decision to withdraw from the accord, which it branded psychological warfare. President Hassan Rouhani also said Iran could resume uranium enrichment without limit in response to Trump's announcement. Newly elected Prime Minister of Armenia Nikol Pashinyan addresses the crowd in Republic Square in Yerevan. The leader of protests that gripped Armenia for weeks was named the country's new Prime Minister on Tuesday, overcoming the immediate political turmoil but raising uncertainty about the longer term. Russian President Vladimir Putin walks before his president inauguration ceremony at the Kremlin in Moscow. Lava from a robust fissure eruption on Kilau Izi Strift Zone consumes a home, then threatens another, near Pahoa, Hawaii. The total number of homes lost within the Leilani Estates subdivision thus far is 21, and geologists from the Hawaii Volcanoes Observatory do not expect the eruption to cease any time soon. A local state of emergency has been declared after Mount Kilau Iyo erupted near residential areas, forcing mandatory evacuation of about 1,700 citizens from their nearby homes. The crater's floor collapsed on the 1st of May and is since then continuing to erode its walls and generating huge explosions of ashes. Several earthquakes have been recorded in the area where the volcanic eruptions continue, including a 6.9 magnitude earthquake which struck the area on the 4th of May. Russian police carrying struggling opposition leader Alexei Navalny to demonstration against President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. Thousands of demonstrators denouncing Putin's upcoming inauguration into a fourth term gathered in the capital's Pushkin Square. Chinese President Xi Jinping speaks at an event to mark Karl Marx's 200th birthday at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. President Vladimir Putin meets with FIFA President Gianni Infantino in Sochi, ahead of the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Supporters of opposition lawmaker Nikol Pashinyan protest in Republic Square in Yerevan, Armenia. 
Pashinyan has urged his supporters to block roads, railway stations and airports after the governing Republican Party voted against his election as Prime Minister. Cubans march during the May Day rally at Revolution Square in Havana. The sky is the limit. A Saudi man and woman fly over the Arabian Sarawak Mountains in the first ever joint wingsuit flight in traditional dress. A symbolic leap of faith towards women's empowerment in Saudi Arabia. A general view for the damaged railway station in Al-Qadam neighborhood, after it was recaptured from Islamic State militants, in the south of Damascus. According to media reports, the Syrian army continued the military offensive it has launched earlier this month against militant groups entrenching in southern Damascus and captured several neighborhoods, including Al-Qadam and Al-Asali and targeting the remnants of armed groups in Al-Hajar Al-Aswad and its surrounding in Damascus southern countryside. Comedian Michelle Wolf attends the celebration after the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Conservatives walked out after Wolf brutally ridiculed President Donald Trump and his aides during her piece. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in raised their hands after signing on a joint statement North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, left, and South Korean President Moon Jae-in raised their hands after signing on a joint statement at the border village of Panmunjom in the demilitarized zone, South Korea. The Korean War will be formally declared over after 65 years, the North and South have said. At a historic summit between leaders Kim Jong-un and Moon Jae-in, the neighboring countries agreed they would work towards peace on the peninsula with a formal end to the conflict set to be announced later this year. The pair agreed to bring the two countries together and establish a peace zone on the contested border. What can we expect on Game of Thrones for the final season? Well we definitely have a year to get that together. Who knows? It's only six episodes from what I'm hearing. I'm hoping we can make it bigger and badder than we have before. What is one universal grooming tip that you tell everyone? It's so anticlimactic, but it's flossing. You got a floss. Also, nails. Just the normal stuff. It's the obvious stuff people can clock you on for not taking care of yourself as much as you should be. Like hardcore gross breath and nasty nails, we've got to get it together.